So let's take example 3. In this example, we are going to find the absolute minimum and maximum of the function f of x, y on the closed triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, and 0, 3. So the first thing we need to do is to find the critical point of this function and then we make sure that the critical point is found in this closed triangular region. So we first of all find fx which is the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to x. So considering this function we are going to differentiate term by term with respect to x and then we treat y as constant. So we differentiate 1 we have 0, we differentiate 4x we have 4. We differentiate negative 5y we have 0 so we move on to fy that is the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to y also we differentiate term by term with respect to y so we differentiate 1 we have 0 for x we have 0 negative 5y we have negative 5 now because fx and then fy are constants it means that we can set both of them to 0 to find the values of x and y hence we say that this function has no critical point. So the function has no critical point. Now what this primarily means also is that the absolute minimum and maximum of this function occur only at the boundary. They occur only at the boundary. So let's try to represent graphically the closed triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0 and then 0, 3. So assuming we have this to be the xy plane, we have this to be the y axis and that to be the x axis and then we have the point 0, 0 to be the origin. So this is going to be the point 2, 0. We have the point 2, 0 and we have this to be 0, 3. So let's complete the triangle. So this happens to be the closed triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, and 0, 3. And this closed triangular region has three line segments. So let's call this line 1, line 2, line 3. So let's try to consider each of the line segments one after the other. So first we have line 1. Now along this line y does not change. y becomes constant and that is y equals 0 and then we have an interval of x from 0. So 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Therefore we are going to have f of x, y and that's equal to f of x and then y is 0 equals we are going to replace y with 0 in this function so we are going to have 1 plus 4x minus 5 times 0 and that's equal to 0 so we are left with 1 plus 4x now when x is equal to 0 we have f of 0 0 to be equal to 1 plus 4 times 0 and that is equal to 1 again when x is equal to 2 then we have f of 2 0 and that's equal to 1 plus 4 times 2 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9 so we have that to be 9 notice that this is a linear function hence we are not going to find the derivative of this function. This is a linear function. So we leave that as such. Now we move on to line 2. Now along line 2, the x value does not change. However, the y value changes. So we have x to be equal to 0. It remains as 0. And then we have 0 is less than or equal to y. It's less than or equal to 3. So we have f of x, y to be equal to f of 0, y to be equal to, that's 1 plus 4 times 0 minus 5y. So that becomes 1 minus 5y. Now, 
when y is equal to 0, we have f of 0, 0. And f of 0, 0 is equal to 1. So we simply write 1 here. Now let's move on to when y equals 3. So when y equals 3, we have f of 0, 3. That will be equal to 1 minus 5 times 3. And that's equal to 1 minus 15. So that is equal to negative 14. So negative 14. Now let's move on to line 3. So for line 3, notice that we have 2.03 and then 20. So we have 2.03 and 20. Now we are going to let we are going to let this to be x1 y1 and that to be x2 y2 we are going to consider the direction of moving downwards or moving down the slope okay moving down the slope so we consider this to be x1 y1 and that to be x2 y2 therefore we need to find the gradient of this function we have m to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and that's equal to y2 that is 0 minus y1 3 divided by x2 that is 2 minus x1 0 so that's we have negative 3 over 2 now we are going to use the point slope form to find the equation of this straight line so that is given by y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 so we have y minus y1 is 3 equals negative 3 over 2 times x minus x1 is 0. So we are going to have y equals, we, we are going to transpose this negative 3 to the right hand side. And then we multiply negative 3 over 2 across. So that becomes negative 3 over 2x. And then we transpose this to the right hand side. So it becomes plus 3. Therefore, we have y to be equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 3. Therefore, we are going to have f of xy to be equal to f of x. And then in place of y, we have negative 3 over 2x plus 3. So we are going to replace y in the given function with negative 3 over 2x plus 3. So that's we have the function 1 plus 4x minus 5y. So in place of y, we have negative 3 over 2x plus 3. And that becomes 1 plus 4x and then plus So plus 15x over 2 and then minus 15. Now let's try to combine these two. So thus we have 1 plus, now we have LCM to be 2. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So 8x plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 15 is 15. So we are going to have 15x. Now 8 plus 15, that is equal to 23. So this becomes 23x and then minus 15. Again, we can simplify this as 1 minus 15 is negative 14. So negative 14 plus 23 over 2x. So that is f of x negative 3 over 2x plus 3. Now, notice that we have an x interval that is 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, we are going to put in x equals 0, x equals 2. So, 
when x is equal to 0, we are going to have f of 0. Now, 0 times negative 3 over 2 is 0. So we are left with plus 3. So that becomes f of 0, 3. And that will be equal to negative 14. Because when you multiply this fraction by 0, you have 0. So f of 0, 3 is equal to negative 14. And then when x is equal to 2, we have f of 2. Now, 2 times negative 3 over 2. So this 2 cancels out the 2 here. And we have negative 3. So negative 3 plus 3, that is 0. So that becomes 2, 0. And then that's equal to negative 14 plus 23 over 2 times 2. So this cancels out that. Now negative 14 plus 23. That is equal to 9. So we have f of 2, 0 to be 9. Now, which of them is the highest value? The highest value, we have 9 here. And then we also have a 9 here. So it means that the highest value is 9. And hence, that is the absolute maximum value. So the absolute maximum value is 9. and occurs it occurs at the point two zero and then this is also two zero so occurs at the point two zero and then the least value happens to be negative 14 that is the least value so that is the absolute minimum value that is negative 14 and it also occurs at the point zero three and occurs at the point zero three.